It's time for the Live Life Loved podcast with internationally renowned author and speaker, Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Her message of good news, practical hope, and assured victory is a thirst quenching relief in today's culture. You do not have to live your life in fear. You can truly and confidently live life loved. And now I give you Dr. Nicole Berryhill, our host of the Live Life Loved podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are. Welcome to the Live Life Loved podcast. If you're new to the show, I'm Nicole Berryhill, and I teach that living life loved changes everything. Imagine a genuine, true paradigm shift that will deeply impact every aspect of your life for the better on autopilot. Your business, personal, and community relationships can feed your soul and boost your prosperity on every level when you learn how to live life loved. You'll find tons of information and resources for free on my website at NicoleBerryHill.com. Be sure to hit the Join the Tribe button and fill out that form. You'll be in the club. We invite you to also participate in the results-oriented coaching intensives, workshops, and courses we have to offer if you so choose to dive in deeper and make this a real part of your life. Okay, so today we continue our ongoing series on how to love, and today's episode is all about that one vital element of love, communication. I love the quote by Anne Morrow Lindbergh in which she says, good communication is just as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard to sleep after. She's talking about a soul connection there. There are two primary forms of human communication and they're verbal and nonverbal. We're going to cover both of those today and explore how we can up our communication skills in both areas to help us connect and love better. Now, unfortunately, and you know, this is just my opinion, I think technology has in some aspects robbed us of our natural and innate desires for real in-person connection, and that's where true, full-being, holistic, natural communication lives and thrives. I'm old enough to remember a world before beepers, (laughs) before cell phones, before the interwebs, um, before smartphones, uh, when if you wanted to see someone, you went over to their house and knocked on the door. And you got the immediate gratification of seeing a smile in someone's eyes just because you showed up unexpectedly. Imagine that. Now, I will be the first to tell you I'm a, I'm a total geek. <laughs> I love technology, but there has to be a balance. We're created for human interaction. And I'll just rest my point on the fact that we use technology and the internet almost exclusively as a means to connect with other humans. (laughs) However, the soul piece is largely missing. A thesis paper I wrote back in the early 2000s was called The Veil of Anonymity in Modern Communications. In it, I explored how communication from behind a technology wall, such as the internet or texting, etc., measurably numbs us socially to the verbal and nonverbal sensitivities of tone of voice, eye contact, facial expression, and general body language, just to start. These nuances are a vital part of human communication, and frankly, now we have a whole generation that's been reared with an unhealthy underexposure to it, and, you know, that's in my humble opinion. Charles Dickens even acknowledged this in his day when he said, Electric communication will never be a substitute for the face of someone who, with their soul, encourages another person to be brave and true. I love that. Tim Wolf said, there are some people who have the quality of richness and joy in them, and they communicate it to everything they touch. It's first of all a physical quality, then becomes a quality of the spirit. Communication is the lifeblood of any relationship, whether it's personal, business, familial, romantic, all relationships rely almost entirely on effective and honest communication. And I want to encourage you today that you can change your world by changing your words. Remember, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Tony Robbins says, To effectively communicate, we must realize that we're all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. George Bernard Shaw said, The single biggest problem with communication is, is the illusion that it's taken place. (laughs) And that brings us to the word of the day. 
It's a Greek word used in the New Testament. It's logos, L-O-G-O-S, which means a word or being the full expression of a thought. Now, it comes from the root word lego, L-E-G-O, which means speaking to a conclusion. So, in other words, to express fully, to bring a thought to life, or to speak your thoughts into existence so as to share the meaning. The coolest use of this word, to me at least, is in the book of John in the very first verse, where he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then you keep reading down to verse 14, and he says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the one only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. By choosing this word logos, John is trying to communicate that Christ is the full expression of the thought or idea of God. The nuanced communication of this passage is just so deeply profound for me. I encourage you to dig in deeper when you have some time. Now, as usual, it's here that we find out that it's all so much better than we were led to believe. It's listener question time on Live Life Loved Podcast with Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Let's see what we have today. Today's question is from Anna in Calabasas. She writes, I always feel like I'm misunderstood in my relationships with family. I speak what I feel is pretty clear language, but it never feels that I'm misunderstood and misquoted, and things just always get out of hand. It makes me just want to disengage completely, but I know that I would regret that choice later on. What help can you offer me to fix this lifelong problem? Anna, I hear you, and I think a huge portion of the audience here hears you. This is a pretty common issue. So first of all, know that you're not alone. In answer to your question, yes, absolutely. This is a fixable problem, 100%. What I teach about communication is what I call closing the circuit method. You need a closed path or a closed circuit to get electrical current to flow. If there's a break anywhere in the path, you have an open circuit and the current stops flowing and the metal atoms in the wire quickly settle down to a peaceful, electrically neutral existence. And if we're using this as an analogy for the flow of communication in any relationship, neutral is not where we want to be. (laughs) We want our loved ones to feel connected, appreciated, and engaged. Same with our business relationships, friendships, community relationships, and so on. Now, picture a gallon of water flowing through an open pipe. The water will flow for a short time, but then stop when all the water exits the pipe. If you pump water through a closed pipe system, however, the water will continue to flow as long as you keep forcing it to move. This is what I mean when I say communication is the lifeblood of any relationship. Your circulatory system is a closed system, and the nourishing, cleansing, life-giving blood is kept freely flowing through the body by the faithful work of the heart. Open circuits are often created by design. For instance, a simple light switch opens and closes the circuit that connects a light to a power source. So you would do well to remember that if you don't close the circuit of communication in your relationships, you're effectively turning the lights off. Or, using the blood flow analogy, if you cut off communication in some area of your relationship, it's equivalent to cutting off blood flow, and we all know what that means. Let me know if this all makes sense to you, okay? So how about commenting below, hashtag close the circuit, to let me know that this makes sense. So now to the details of how I've taught hundreds, if not thousands of people over the years, how to experience the emotional security of knowing 100% of the time that their thoughts and ideas are fully received and understood. My closing the circuit method has three parts. Number one, communicate clearly and completely. Number two, verify the communication has been received. And number three, verify the communication has been understood in the way you intended it to be received. These three steps are your responsibility to complete as the speaker. So you may be thinking, okay, Nicole, what what are you talking about? (laughs) What do you mean by this? (laughs) Well, I have to use myself as the best example on earth of step one, communicate clearly and completely. 
Ask anyone who knows me well, and they'll verify this. I joke often that I have a disease by which I think everyone knows everything. (laughs) I think sometimes this is pretty common among multitaskers. Basically, what that means is I have thought a task or a process through from beginning to end, but because I'm so familiar with the workings, by time to communicate this to another person, I kind of give the flyover view instead of going through the details, which obviously the other person needs in order to completely understand. (laughs) So this definitely is my Achilles heel in business relationships and interpersonal relationships. So I have to remind myself to complete the circuit all the time. And it starts with me communicating clearly and completely and not leaving key items out. So step number two, what we mean by that is to verify the communication has been received. Um, Think of this as a metaphorical red receipt, like you would get from someone opening a business email. This step can be either completed by verbal or nonverbal communication. For instance, if you're sitting across the table from a family member having a serious discussion, You may receive positive eye-to-eye contact or nod in agreement or some other nonverbal communication. But if you're having the same discussion by phone, you may hear, "Uh uh uh-huh, mm-hmm, to communicate that they're listening and engaged. Based on my 25 plus years of experience, step two is where most people stop. And it's the gap between step two and three where most of the misunderstandings, hurt feelings, and personal offenses and such are born. Most people will say what they need to say, verify in some way that the other person heard it, and call it a day, which leaves so much open to interpretation. And just by human nature alone, we always default to the lowest common denominator. The common saying of water seeks its own level truly applies here. In a sociological context, it means we will always seek out those most like us. And of course, the next step inference is that we engage with people who think like us. So thereby, we're quick to fill in the blanks, so to speak, with meaning that is not implicitly communicated. We make assumptions, and they're not always right. A simplified example would be something like, If you say to a family member, stop that, while they're singing and playing a card game with friends, they may pack up the cards and keep singing, when in fact, you weren't referring to the card game at all. You just really needed some peace and quiet. So, as you can see, step three is vital, and newsflash, it's 100% your responsibility. If you have, one, communicated completely and clearly what you needed to say, And number two, verified the other party received the communication. And then most importantly, number three, clarified that they understood your meaning. You have done your part 100%. What they do with what you've shared from that point on is entirely up to them. If their response is to be offended, upset, or any other negative response, you can at least rest assured it was not from a misunderstanding. It's a huge comfort to know you're creating a life that includes clear and honest communication as a daily requirement. And almost always, if you adopt the complete the circuit method with kindness and patience, the people in your relationships will feel heard, validated, important, and more. You will hopefully also notice over time that they'll normally adopt this into their communication patterns as well, just out of familiarity. And in turn, it will make you feel more valued and appreciated, especially if you explain the process in advance or even invite them to listen to this podcast episode. Now, before we move on to nonverbal communication and wrap up today's episode, I want to invite you to join me for my flagship program, M2M, Minimize to Maximize. This is a five-week intensive program that will help you focus on what's important, build up your personal strength and self-esteem, ignore the shiny objects, plan for success to include important self-care steps because you can't give away what you don't have. The training includes a workbook, a journal, a planner, and more tools, including one-on-one time with me to help you push a reset button that will help you soar to the life level you know you should be living. Visit NicoleBerryHill.com and click on Guided Courses on the main menu to learn more and apply today. Seats are filling up quickly and we only have, I think, about seven seats left as of this broadcast. You're worth the investment and by this time next month, you could be perfecting the exact same skills you need to live the life you want full of love, peace, and prosperity.
click the Guided Courses link at the top of NicoleBerryHill.com and apply today to secure your seat. Okay, so on to nonverbal communication skills. Far and away, the most important one above all else is to look people in the eyes when you're communicating at all times. Not like a creepy stalker weirdo stare, but engage them in a relaxed eye contact. It conveys respect and commands respect. It communicates the nuances of intent and purpose. And as we're instructed in Proverbs 30, 17, the eye is the window to the soul. The eyes do communicate various emotions. Wide open eyes communicate fear, while a squint of the eyes communicates anger or disgust. Dreamy eyes are said to communicate love and affection. In his Sermon on the Mount, Christ taught his disciples that the eye is the light of the soul. In Matthew 6, 23 the eye is the lamp of the body, Christ says. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy... And in this way, he's this word he uses there is actually referring to being stingy, like not embracing those around you. So if your eyes are unhealthy or stingy or not open to kindness, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So by far, making eye contact while you communicate is the very best advice anyone can give you. And really, it encompasses almost every other nonverbal communication. Make yourself available and open to the people in your life. Let down your guard. Communicate clearly. Make sure your message is received and understood. Taking such care in communications is truly a lost art and is a deeply necessary element in the process of learning to live life loved. So until then, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to the Live Life Loved podcast with Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share over your social media to help spread the love. Be sure to sign up for the free Live Life Loved newsletter today at NicoleBerryHill.com for bonus weekly content to help you live your life loved.